Hey everyone, welcome to our Lake Point Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel and I'm so glad you chose to be with us today. Hmm, chose to be with us. I don't know about you, but I really like having choices in life. So, we're going to play a little game today that's all about choices. You can start by pulling out the chalkboard and a piece of chalk. You should all have one on your desk and then you can choose the color you'd like to work with. All right, now that everyone's ready, let's begin. So first off, I want you to draw me what you'd like to choose to have for lunch today. You'll have 20 seconds. Time's up. Let's see what you've got. Hold up your chalkboards and shout out what you drew. Hmm, it, it sounds delicious. Now you can erase that and get ready for our next one. All right, now if you could choose, write down for me the number of days you wish there was until school started. Maybe it's one, maybe it's 100, maybe it's something in between. Okay, everyone have their number written down? Now hold up your chalkboard and shout out your answer. Whew, that's a lot of different numbers from the sounds of it. For the record, I think there's like 15 days now until school officially starts. I hope you're ready for it. All right, you can erase your chalkboard. This is the last one. Now, if you could choose to adopt any animal in the world to become your pet and there were no concerns, example like they might eat you or they only live in the jungle, what animal would you choose? You'll have 20 seconds to draw it. Time's up, show me what you've got and yell at what it is. Whoa, those are some pretty interesting choices. I'd love to know what your family would have to say about that. All right, now it's time to take your chalkboard, chalk and wipe and stick it under your chair or under your desk, your choice. Good. You know, giving people a choice sometimes is a way you can show them love by not demanding they do what you want. But on the other hand, sometimes there are people in our lives who out of love need to make the right choice for us. It all depends on the situation. Love. We've been talking a lot about that this month, haven't we? Now, what is love again? Well, we describe it as this. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. I'll count to three and then we'll say it together. One, two, three. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. No one does this better than God. Check out our verse of the month. Here is what love is. It is not that we love God, it is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. First John 4, 10, nerve. God loved us so much that even though we make wrong choices and sin, he made the choice to offer us forgiveness through Jesus. However, we all get to choose whether we accept that love and forgiveness. All right, it's time now to rehearse our verse. Stand up for some Freeze Dance Sunday. Here is what love is. It is not that we love God, it is that He loved us and sent His Son to give His life to pay for our sins. 1 John 4, 10, NERV. Here is 
what love is. It is not that we love God, it is that He loved us and sent His Son to give His life to pay for our sins. 1 John 4, 10, NERV. Here is what love is. It is not that we love God, it is that He loved us and sent His Son to give His life to pay for our sins. 1 John 4, 10, NERV. Nice job. All right, you guys can grab a seat now. So love, what is it again? Well, love is showing others how much they matter to you. And our bottom line or our focus point of today is, God has a plan to show love to the world. Let's say it together. One, two, three. God has a plan to show love to the world. Hmm, I choose to learn more about this. I hope you do too as we check out more now with the So and So Show. Wait, what are you doing? I'm eating breakfast. These recipes do not taste good, though. I think you're supposed to cook the recipes. <sighs> yes. Mm. They're, that's brilliant, man. Cooking the book. Coming yeah. up. No. No. John. Hello everyone, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Brandon, do you remember those epic adventure books we used to read when you could choose your own adventure? Like yes. the, the ending would be different depending on what you chose throughout the book? I remember those, yes. Yeah, well, that's what we're gonna do today. Read a book. No, no, no. the audience, you all, will get to create your own So-and-So Show. Woo! That's right. We'll put the different options on the screen, and all of you, wherever you're watching in the world, yep. will shout out your choice. We'll go with whoever's loudest. Great, great. Okay, so where do we start? Uh, where do we start? <laughs> where do we start? Well, you know, we have to go on an adventure, right? That's, uh, yes, that's how yes, all the books are. Yes. Uh, okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to... Point at our lips. Okay, now what do we do? Okay, before you go on an adventure, yeah. you need to figure out what you're going to wear. So I think we should dress like mountain climbers. Mountain? No, well, that sounds interesting, but I think that we should dress like deep sea divers. Oh. oh. Okay, now it's time to choose. Do you want us to dress like mountain climbers? Or deep sea divers? Start cheering now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Woohoo! Deep sea diving outfits it is. The people have spoken. Let's suit up. Yeah. Really? Hey, who dives deeper than a shark? <laughs> yeah. I just hope it doesn't mess you up on our adventure. You ready to go? Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. We, we haven't done any training. We can't just what? go. No training? No, I think we should just wing it. No, I think we should train first. What? Oh, sounds like another choice for our viewers. Should we train? Or just go for it? Let's hear your cheers. Okay, Training okay, okay. wins. So how do you want to train? With a trainer, of course. Did somebody say pickle jellies? Horvath. Yes, I am Horvath. Are you ready for some trainings? Absolutely. We're going on an adventure. Oh, where is this adventure you are going to? Uh, well, we don't know yet, actually. But, you know, probably somewhere underwater. <laughs> Underwaters? Wow. Okay. First things first. We prep the arms, okay? We swim, one, two, three, and eight. And then we fly, 17, 18, beef, jerky. And then we do this 72 times, okay? Go! Feel the burn! Not George Murray. All right! Oh. 
Good jobs. Oh. Next ah. move. The water wavers. Are you ready? Here we go. Grab your nose. All right. Now it's time for the leggies. Ready, hands on hips, go. <laughs> My right brain, left brain, we're communicating. Whew. All right, training's over. Thanks, Horvath. Horvath, that's me. See you all later. Clap, clap. All right. Well, I think we're ready now. We just uh, need them to decide where we're going on our adventure. Well, I'm assuming they'll choose something obvious like diving by the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, yeah. It's not like they'd say something ridiculous like climbing Mount Everest. Now, why would you even uh, say... Oh, man. Where's our adventure? The Great Barrier Reef? Or Mount Everest? Shout out your choice. We have to. Well, we can't back down on our promises now. So, Mount Everest, here we come. Let's go climbing to Mount Everest. You had to suggest deep sea diving outfits. You had to suggest Mount Everest? <laughs> it's Bible story time with Callan. Kellen! Huh. What's going on? Oh, where are you right now? Mount Everest? Where are you? You know? I really don't know. You got a story for us today, Kellen? Of course. Today, we're looking at a man named Abraham, or Abram, in the book of Genesis. Now, Abram was chosen to be a part of God's plan to show love to the entire world. And helping me tell today's story is our very own so-and-so show players. Oh, um, thank you. Okay, no, actually, helping me tell today's story is our very own so-and-so show improv troupe. Now, the players weren't given a script this week, so they'll be improvising or making up the story as they go along. And that sounds... It sounds interesting. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> the so-and-so show improv troupe. Here goes. <clears throat> One day, God spoke to Abram and said, Go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. God told Abram and his family to leave his home and just go without really knowing where. So Abram had a choice to make. Let's see what he did. Listen, the Lord has asked us to go, where? everyone. Sorry, sorry. Where? I yes, where? Don't know. Well, now what should we do? I don't want to leave. Sarai, my wife, what? My nephew, let us build a log cabin on this land and live forever. Wonderful! I love you, Uncle Abram. No, 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 no. That's not what happened. But I can see how you might think that. Leaving your home to go somewhere you weren't familiar with would be a hard choice to make. But maybe if you had all the information, that would help. So God told Abram to go but God also gave Abram a promise. God said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. So Abram's family didn't stay. Oh yes, of course, Lord, we will go just as you say. I'll start packing. I <clears throat> love you, Uncle Abram. <laughs> it's this way. Abram believed and obeyed God. Even though they had lived in their homeland for many, many years, Abram took his entire family and their possessions and animals and left for the land that the Lord promised them. 
Can you imagine what that must have been like? So here's what happened next. Maybe. <sighs> this is it. The land of Canaan. It's beautiful. Come on, everybody. I love you, Uncle Abram. What should we do now that we are in the promised land? Two words. Dance party. Um, when they got to Canaan, Abram, Sarai, and Lot probably didn't have a club dance party. What did happen was that God appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your family who comes after you. Then Abram built an altar to honor God. I am building this altar, O oh Lord, because you have appeared to me here and you have spoken to me here. And I will always remember you and give thanks to you. God had told Abram that he would have a huge family. But at that time, Abram and Sarai, well, they didn't have any children. So sometime later, God spoke to Abram again. God said, look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. Two, four, six, eight. There's, there's no way that I could count them all. There, there's, there's just too many. Then God said, that's how many children will be born into your family. So now, Abram's got another choice to make. Does Abram trust God and believe what God has in store for his future? Or does he not? Now, hopefully, you're about to find out. I'm going to have more people in my family than I can count? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, that's just crazy talk. That's just not possible. But then, you know, well, God is, you know, God. So, <laughs> that's all, that's a lot of kids. Am I gonna have to change all those diapers? I just don't know if I can believe you on this one, Lord. You know, I do. I do believe you, Lord. I have faith. This is gonna be awesome. That's what happened, wow. The Lord was pleased with Abram because he believed, and Abram's faith made him right with the Lord. The end. Let's give it up for the so-and-so show improv troupe. That's amazing. God said that the whole world would be blessed because of Abram's family. That's a pretty big promise. It sure is. It was all a part of God's amazing plan to show love to the world. And did God keep the promise? Yes. When they were very old, God gave Abram and Sarai a son. And from that son, their family grew and grew and grew and eventually became the nation of Israel. And many years later, Jesus was born into that family. Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan to love and bless the whole world. And guess what? What? We get to be a part of God's plan today, too. Once Jesus gave his life for us, he made a way for anyone who believes in him to be a part of the family of God. Abram's family is still growing and growing and growing as more people believe in Jesus and share God's love with the world. That's amazing. Thanks, Kellen. Anytime. Hey, okay, see you. Wow, that was an epic plan God had. Yeah, I'll say. Hey, which reminds me. Reveal the question. Oh, yeah. When have you made a plan? Yeah, you know, just like God made a plan to love the world, I bet there are times you've made a plan to show love to people you care about. Yeah, like surprising someone with a gift. Or uh, uh, helping a friend out at school. Or celebrating someone on their birthday. Yeah, these are all great ideas. So when have you made a plan? Hey, this was a good show. Yeah. I guess we should wrap up and go home, huh? Yeah, unless you uh, want to go back to Mount Everest. No! <laughs> Ah, oh, I said it. Go ahead. Everest, Everest, Everest. If you say so, I'm Brandon. I'm John. And we'll see you at Mount Everest. Mount Everest, the highest point in the world. Is it? I think so. Huh.
Is it, is it hard to climb in that shark outfit? No, it's super easy. Oh. 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 Are you okay? I'm okay. Baby shark. Baby shark. Baby shark. Abram, or Abraham as he was later known as, had a life full of mysteries, but he didn't let that bother him. God told Abraham to leave home and Abraham went, even though he didn't know what God had in store for him. God promised Abraham the whole world would be blessed because of his family and Abraham trusted God, even though he didn't know how that would ever work out. But we know how it worked out because thousands of years later after Abraham had died, one of his relatives was born in a stable in Bethlehem. Yes, that is right, one of Abraham's future relatives was Jesus. See, God always had a plan to show love to the world by sending Jesus. That was the promise he made to Abraham. And you are invited to be a part of that promise, that plan, by accepting the love, forgiveness, and relationship Jesus offers to you. Jesus is still God's plan to show love to the world, to make things right, even today. We have a part to play in this plan too, by sharing God's love with others, by helping others, speaking up for others, and giving of what we have for others. God has a plan to show love to the world. It involves Jesus and it involves you. It's time to bring it home now with our small group time, so long with your parent, listen to today's instructions. First, discuss ways you can show love to those around you. Think of different people in different situations, like people in your family, your neighborhood, people in your class at school, your teacher. Have you ever realized that when you show love to these people, you're part of God's plan to show love to the entire world? Does that motivate you in any special way? Now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Next, grab a suitcase and some rolled up pairs of socks. Try tossing the socks into the suitcase as you practice saying our memory verse one more time. Parents, now is the time to either scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lake Point app to build our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. So kids, while your parents are doing that, why don't you run off and chew seven pairs of socks for our activity today? Just a reminder that you can go back and watch your favorite Lake Point Kids online family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the Family Resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Remember, God has a plan to show love to the world. <laughs>